listening to Your Ultimate Life with Kellen Flukiger, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hello, 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 and welcome to the show today. Welcome to Your Ultimate Life. You know, every time the show starts, I listen to that intro, and I am always uh, amazed. They say my name exactly right, Kellen Flukiger. Flukiger is such a weird name, right? I'll tell you a little story about that. You know, they have a website that you can look up the distribution around the world of a, of a given name, right? Any name doesn't matter. And it shows you what country or countries have the most of that name. And Flukiger is a Swiss, a Swiss and the German part of Switzerland, but it's really Swiss. And so if you look at it, Switzerland is a bright red Germany is kind of a pale pink, and the rest of the world is empty. <laughs> so there aren't very many, although I have heard that uh, Flukiger in some parts of Switzerland is as common as Smith. But you don't want to hear about my name. You might want to go look at that site, though. It's interesting. Today, I want to excuse me, talk about creativity, and I use this background. I uh, hope you're watching the video. <coughs> if you're not, you need to go to Sam's site. Uh, LA Talk Radio site and look at it later. But anyway, that's a picture of the recording studio and uh, the mixing desk. And, you know, you used to back in the day had the, you know, eight foot mixing boards. And I had one of those many years ago. Today, it's all on the computer screens, as you can see. And I've got four, four big computer screens back there uh, next to each other and stacked on top of each other so that I can do the, the work there. And the reason I use that background is because we're talking about creativity and that's, of course, uh, music. I do music in the studio. I used to do a lot for other folks, and now it's all for me. And everything is in the box, they say. In the box means in the computer. <clears throat> Back in the day, I had uh, racks and racks of keyboards like you used to see in rock concerts in the 70s, right? Big racks of keyboards and all that stuff. I got a funny story about that. In the days when I had the studio in the 80s uh, in Phoenix, <clears throat> There was a, a television program that was come to town, and it was one of those summer. You know, in those days, they had television shows that lasted from September. They'd debut the new stuff, and they'd end kind of in April or May or something. And then in summer, they'd have either reruns or these short uh, television shows that only lasted, you know, eight or ten weeks. And there was one of those in town filming called The Highwayman, and it starred some guy from Australia. I don't even know the story. I think it was the Highwaymen. But anyway, they needed a scene, a rock concert scene. And so they hired me for $1,000 that day to take my studio apart. And I didn't have to bring cables because it didn't have to be working, but all the gear and then set it all up on the stage. And they had a, you know, smoke machine and all the kind of stuff that they do. So I got to sit backstage and babysit my gear, watch it and everything. And there was one little part where I was a little extra. I was in the scene, right? But you wouldn't have seen that and, and you wouldn't know it unless I was there. But anyway, that was uh, that was kind of fun. So today I want to talk about creativity. What is it? How come I know for sure you have it? Why it matters? What to do with it? What blocks it? And what you can do about that? So when we think of creativity, the first thing is, you know, when we think of the traditional things, but let's just start with a little bit of a definition. Creativity is really just seeing things in a new way. Now, you've all seen those uh, pictures on the web where it has something that looks like two goblets next to each other, black and white. And if you look at it closely, it's uh, two faces. And there's other ones where you can, one that's a young a young woman and an, an old woman in the picture, and she's looking down, all those kinds of things. So looking in, looking at things in a new way is one piece of creativity. Now, we have the <clears throat> another way to think about it, looking, th looking at things in a new way. Another way to think about it is taking something all apart and, and seeing how else it can be assembled. Now, you might be harking back to a time when you took apart the lawnmower or, you're, you know, you're toaster or something and you couldn't put it back together. Yeah, that's a, appropriate too. But I was thinking more in terms of a, a metaphorically a little bit, taking apart a problem and putting it back together in a new way, asking different questions. What else is possible? One of the things I do in my coaching practice is ask this question. 
because we tend to look at things through certain lenses. And I often hold these glasses up when I talk about our lenses. And I mean that in terms of how we see the world. Everything is the way we think it is because of our previous experience. Like you might look at this picture of the studio and I have no idea what you think. And the reason I don't is because I don't know what else you've seen or know about so that this picture and the pieces in it mean anything to you. And so one way to, one way to think about this is just ask this question, given what is, what do I wish to create? Now we spend a lot of time often uh, upset about what is frustrated that so-and-so did this or that the weather is like this or that this or that speech got made or that so-and-so got elected or whatever. And the real question is, given what is, what is, is, right? What am I going to do? What is up? What is my opportunity to create? Now, <clears throat> one thing we've all done is just sit around and bitch about something. Something is the way it is. And instead of asking what we can create or what there is to do, we just complain about it. Now, I'm not going to tell you you shouldn't complain. You're free to complain. But it's not very productive, because the externalities around us, we can't really control much. You know, there's not a lot we can do about those externalities. Now, we can affect them in small ways. If you're talking about an election, you know, you can vote or if something in your city, you can go do whatever. And if there's a hole in your wall, you can fix it. Or if your roof's leaking, you can fix it. But the real question is, given what is, what do I wish to create? And this is where creativity plays such a role, because if we only default to everything we all know, we already know, then we're going to get exactly the same kind of results we always got. And it's not going to amount to much. Sorry for the interruption. I got a message from a client that looked like it might be urgent. But anyway, here's the thing I want you to think about. Creativity is seeing things in a new way. It's taking it apart and putting it together again differently to see what else you can create. It's asking the question, what is possible here? I get lessons in that all the time here because our, our Ukrainian granddaughter, she's a, her mom and her live here with us because of the war and have for almost two years. It's exciting. They've been here since June, two years ago. But anyway, her creativity is endless. I have never seen so many things you could create from pipe cleaners and tape and drawing and empty pop cans and just boundless stuff I never would have imagined. And some of it is quite good. I mean, some of it looks like, you know, typical kid stuff, but some of it is quite impressive. And I think to myself, what, what, what goes on in the mind to allow you to do that? Well, here's some, we're going to talk about cultivating creativity. Another way to think about creativity is on purpose to ignore conventions, ignore limitations. And I'm not suggesting doing anything dangerous or stupid, but just ignoring your, your lenses. Your lenses might say, well, do this or do that. And if you intentionally say, well, I'm just going to leave everything uninterpreted here. I'm not going to go to my default meaning. So you get an email and it says, I want to talk to you. Now, you might immediately say, oh, dear, something's wrong. Or you might immediately say, ooh, here's an opportunity. I wonder what's coming. That depends on how you look at the header. Okay, so I'm going to give you an assignment, and there's several assignments today in this um, episode. And the reason there are is I want you to, I want you to I want first understand that you're wildly creative. I can't tell you, because I don't know the number, how many people have told me, well, I'm not creative. Or... I'm not creative at all, or yeah, I don't think I can, you know, all kinds of excuses about that. That is simply not true. You may not have exercised it. You may not want to be embarrassed. You may have a bunch of reasons why you don't want to claim it, but you are wildly creative, insanely wildly creative. Second thing is you are wildly gifted. You may or may not know what those gifts are right now, and you may or may not have used them. But instead of arguing with me and thinking, hey, he's full of crap, why don't you say, hey, what if I am really, really gifted? What if I am really, really creative? What can I do with that? So here is your first assignment, first of many today. And that is take a period of time, at least a half a day, 
And every single thing that you look at, ask yourself this question, how else could I see this? How else can I interpret this thing? What else is possible here? Now, I'll give you an example. I was in BNI a number of years ago, and I, I joined BNI as a networking group, Business Networking International, and they have rules, and the rules are only one person in a given category can belong to a chapter. Now, a city like Edmonton, Alberta, where I live now, has many, many chapters. I can't remember, 50 or 60 chapters, and they're all over the place. But in one chapter, and a chapter might be 20 to 40 people, you can only have one financial planner or one residential real estate person or one fitness person. And the reason is because the purpose of the chapter is to um, you know, promote business and so forth. So they don't want a bunch of competitors. And if you already go to a chapter and there's somebody there, you gotta go, you gotta go somewhere else. <clears throat> so creativity is important in how you present yourself. I went to this um BNI chapter and they didn't have either a business coach or a life coach. And so I got the opportunity to pick which one I wanted and to create, you know, uh, a blend so I could use all the things that I knew and help people improve their lives. Now, a little while later, somebody came and they wanted to join and they were a sales trainer. Now, one way I could look at that is, ooh, competition, because as a business coach, I work with sales organizations and I help people improve their sales. Instead, what I decided to do is I talked to him and we decided that was fine and he was going to do that. And I was going to do uh, business coaching, including and refer people to him. And I did. I took his sales training. He joined one of my group coaching programs and we both learned a lot because we chose to look at it a different way. Another thing that happened in that same chapter was there was a business coach that was in it and they were leaving. And so I wanted to meet him and he, he was going to be out of the province for some months. And so we set up a meeting to, to have a conversation. And the morning of the meeting, I got a text message saying, uh, he, that he uh, wasn't able to make the meeting. And so I sent a message back. Okay, would you like to reschedule? And he sent a message back, said, no, I really am not interested in meeting. Okay, now that's what is. Given what is, I'm not interested in meeting. What do I want to create? So here's my possibilities. I could have thought he was rude and been offended. And I could have ignored it, could have ghosted him. Or I could have sent a message back saying, well, thanks a lot. I hope you you know, have a crappy time wherever you're going. <clears throat> but I thought, what do I wish to create? Well, I knew what I wished to create. I wished to create opportunity. I wished to create good feelings. I, I really wanted that to happen because I didn't know where it would lead. So I sent back a different message. I created the future by choosing the message. And I simply said, I understand. That's fantastic. I hope you have a great success in the other province where you're going. And I listed it and so forth. And then I said, perhaps we can meet another time. And I left it completely positive because that's what I wanted to create. So that is another way to think about creativity. Now I want to talk about some examples of creativity to give you, get you started and to set up the next assignment. Your first assignment is to take at least half a day and ask yourself, in every situation, how else can I think about this? How else can I see that? That's especially important if you're feeling a problem, like something's a struggle. Oh, that's not what I want to <clears throat> catch that. As soon as you have that feeling, just ask yourself, what else can I see here? What else is possible? Okay. All right. The second thing is we, we all know the traditional kinds of creativity. We think of art, <clears throat> for example. I have a client who's a fabulous artist, world-class, unbelievable. He does incredible paintings. Not only does he do portraits and pictures of other things, but he does um, big paintings that, caps, that capture someone's life instead of accomplishments. And it's just amazing. And he's incredible. So I have an artist that's a client. That's a traditional thing. Music is a, is a creative thing. Now, I'm a musician, right? Here's a recording studio. I've done hundreds of songs in there and 
back in the day when I had bands come over, I only do stuff for myself now because I want to, but I had a big recording room and microphones and the whole nine yards. And so I was creative there. I was a recording engineer. I was an arranger. I helped people with arrangements and all the kinds of things that were associated with producing their songs. Okay, another traditional thing is dance. My wife, Joy, was a dancer. She was in Ukrainian dance troops. A couple of different ones here in Edmonton because there's a large Ukrainian population. So she was very talented in that. I met a sculptor the other day who was had done a lot of stuff for redesigning of homes and did a lot of sculpture there. Drama, speaking, and on and on and on. <clears throat> there's more... And there's more of those. But those are the traditional kind of creative things. And sometimes when people say, and maybe you said, well, I'm not creative, maybe that's what you're thinking. I don't have one of those obvious talents that you can point to and say, that's creativity. Well, let me expand your thought. Okay? I'm going to expand your thought about that. One of the ways that my wife is creative is she loves to do upcycling. So she'll take old clothing and take it apart and resew it together and make something different out of it. And she does a really nice job. Uh, there's a sculptor that I have seen <clears throat> who takes old junk and makes interesting sculptures. Joy's dad did that. He was an archaeologist and in the process found all kinds of junk in old places that he would go. And he would weld it together and make lamps and different things that were kind of cool. So there's a different kind of creativity. Another thing that's happening right now is this rise of artificial intelligence. Now, by now, I'm sure you've heard of ChatGPT, and I hope you're using it. I hope you're using it like crazy because it is getting better and better and better. Uh, <clears throat> I hope you're using it to write stuff for you. I hope you're using it to create pictures. I'm not encouraging deep fakes and trying to fool people or rip anybody off or damage reputations. Forget all that. I'm talking about good, productive uses. The fact that the that this AI is like taking over is actually a good thing. Now, there are going to be some ethical questions about how we use it and how we, you know, watch out for negative things. I get all that, and I'm not pretending those away. But I am saying it is a tool, right? I just got an email from Adobe, uh, Adobe Corporation. Adobe makes lots of products. They make... Um, Dreamweaver, which is a programming product. They make Photoshop, which most of you have heard of. Adobe Illustrator, Adobe InDesign. They make ones I use, Premiere Pro, which is the video editing platform, and After Effects, and Adobe Audition, and several others. And I subscribe to it because I use them all the time. I got an email today saying they have now a new AI, artificial intelligence, aided piece in the video editing. And they're saying it's going to make your editing faster. Well, I can't wait to open it and try it to see what that does. Maybe it's color grading, maybe it's, you know, editing points and suggestions about how to do that better and faster. That kind of tool is available to you right here, right now. And if you're not using it, you're missing out. The idea that you, you need to slog away and do things the whole old way with pencil and paper, what, you use a typewriter? Do you use a word processor? Oh, well, you got more access to info when the library came to town. When Google came to town, you didn't have to move. You can have every piece of information practically known to man available at your fingertips in two seconds. AI is exactly the same. Exactly the same. So if you want to increase your creativity, your opportunity to do more and more and explore ideas, get into this AI. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Go there. Open AI, I think. OpenAI.com. But all you have to do is look up ChatGPT. I have like, this picture right here behind me is an actual photograph. But often on the backgrounds I use in this and a podcast, you know, I've got hundreds of podcast episodes or AI generated images. And I can create images that are according to the mood or the topic of the, of the, of the episode like I did for this, only had a real picture. So that enhances your creativity, enhances your experience. So here's your assignment. Your assignment from part two here is to dive into this AI. Now, uh, Bing, the search engine, has got some of it built in, and so do some of the other things. I see some stuff on Google talking about AI. <clears throat> because I already use ChatGPT and Dolly3 and some of the others, I don't really use the ones built into the uh, built into the browsers. <clears throat> but here's your assignment. Go play with it. Go see what you can do.
Ask it to write stuff for you. I've got a client that just talks to it and speaks long things and back and forth in conversation. And it's amazing. I've seen some of the results. It's not quite to the point where you can have it like 2001, where the robot is, you know, humanoid form. Well, that robot isn't. I saw a thing on TV the other day where the robot is humanoid and, you know, just shows up and then it looks like a real person. I know the one like that, Alien. The movie Alien had a robot that was quasi-personal. But anyway, it's not like that, but it is way more intelligent than you think and it is powerful. So enhance your creativity. Otherwise, you're going to get behind, fall behind. Use the tools. All right. The third part is I want to ask um, this question. Our, uh, do you express yourself fully? And that might sound like a silly question, but I have people that have told me in person, and I've seen, you know, posts of stuff like this. It says, oh, the world can't handle me like I am. The world can't handle the real me. Now, I don't know exactly what each person that said that meant, but when I've had time to talk about it, what usually comes out is I'm so far outside the lines, I'm so far different than, quote, the norm, that I, you know, the world couldn't handle me. I would be shunned or, you know, disowned or something. I would be put aside, kicked to the curb, whatever. Well, there is huge, I'm not saying the world's perfect or anything else, but there's huge, huge opportunity and progress in that area. Your ability to express yourself is more now than it has ever, ever been. Now, we've got problems with cancel culture and people canceling each other and hate and bullying and all the rest. That's part of the things that come with this stuff. But here's your third challenge. Explore how you're expressing yourself. Now, I'm not saying you need to jump on social media and do weird stuff unless you want to, but don't be afraid to. Don't be afraid to express your true self. And because here's what I know, and I haven't known this all my life, I've learned it the last 10 years. I mean, I left my energy career in 2007, eight. And so for the last 16 plus years, 16 and a half years, I have been writing books, developing, you know, social presence as these platforms became available and writing, uh, I said, writing books, creating more music and expressing myself into the world. Before that, I didn't consider myself an author or anything like that. So because of the explosion of opportunities, <clears throat> you have more opportunity than ever to just be yourself. And you know why that's important? Because it, you can't be someone else. Everyone else is already taken. The best you can be for the world is your authentic self. The best you can be to make yourself happy is your authentic self. The best way to make a difference in the world is to tell the truth and be your authentic self. The best way to make money is to be your authentic self. Pretending you're someone else is always difficult and it takes way more energy to pretend than it does to be authentic and real. <clears throat> if some of the ways you're authentic and real get you in trouble, okay, then you can decide if that's worth it. If that's a conscious choice. Well, if I do that in this situation, you know, here's the answer, here's the feedback. Okay, well, you can decide where to do that based on the consequences. But I'm encouraging you to explore that fully. Now, this whole program is about creating your ultimate life. I have a definition for that, and you've heard it a bunch of times. <clears throat> it's a life of purpose, prosperity, and joy. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, well, I can't get paid for what I like to do. I could never make a living doing what I like. That's ju I'm just calling that out right now. That's just flat not true. Anything that is your passion that you really love to do, there's an audience. There's a need. There's somebody that will watch it, that will buy it, and that will pay you for it. Period. The only question is, are you willing to create it? Are you willing to share it? And figure out how to market it so you can get paid. Because just because you create it doesn't market it by itself. 
right? If I build a cool thing and put it over there on the desk, I'm not going to get rich. I've got to market it. The good news, it's easier to do that today than it has ever been since the dawn of history. Because of the internet, you can reach anywhere in the world, you know, and so our ability to reach, I mean, my, when I ran the recording studio that I talked about earlier, my reach was limited to the Phoenix area. That's all I could do. I could put ads in the yellow pages, which I did. I put ads in the newspaper. I did in the artist newspaper called the new times. And that was how, and then word of mouth. And I did studio work or session work in other studios, but I was limited. That's it. Today. I can advertise. I don't do, I don't do studio work. I mean, I do for myself, but I don't sell that studio work anymore because I don't want to. But even if I wanted to, I could do session work everywhere in the world. Why? The internet. File formats are standardized. I can send music somewhere. People can do parts, send it back, files, et cetera, et cetera. So almost without exception, unless you're selling car tires or something, you can work anywhere in the world and you can do business. You can express your creativity, find your audience, make an impact and make money anywhere in the world. And I've had lots of people tell me, oh, that's crazy. I can't. And then they think somehow they have a story that whatever they do, they can't make money with. And after we talk for an hour, it's obvious even to them that they could. Now, there's a choice about whether or not you want to, whether or not you're willing to do the work and package the product and create the Whatever it is, videos or PDFs or sculptures or whatever, are you willing to create it and do the work associated with that? But there's no limitation on your creativity. And so saying, oh, I can't because X is nonsense. It's an excuse. It's bullshit. I call it. All right. So here's your third assignment. Today or tomorrow, if it's late, too late where you're watching this. Try something brand new. Express yourself in a new way. Because you know what? It's all an experiment. Maybe it'll go the way you want. And maybe that dreaded thing, people will laugh. <clears throat> or maybe you'll have crickets. Nobody will even care. I was just on a call with my vocal coach. And we were talking about stylistically how to sing a certain thing. And expression. I've got a reggae song that's coming out or that's already on one of the albums. It's on Spotify and it's called The Distance. If you want to hear it, The Distance. Anyway, we were talking about how to perform it live. And I was asking him, you know, about different kinds of things I could do accent wise or rhythm to to perform the song in, in a reggae tradition and what would be overblown and what would be OK. And he said something funny. He said, you never know till you try. And he gave me an example of a show that he was doing. He was doing uh, back when he was doing acting and quite a bit. And he was working with some famous actors and they worked out a scene that for them was so funny. They were laughing, literally falling on the stage, laughing during rehearsal. And they thought it would be great. And so they put it in the show and did it. And it fell completely flat. Nothing. Crickets. Empty. Blah. Terrible. Oh, no. Hide your face. Crawl under the chair. So what? So they just didn't do it again. End of story. Nobody died. Nobody melted. You know, like the Wicked Witch of the West in The Wizard of Oz. It doesn't happen. Everything is a test and an experiment. So this is encouragement. And the assignment from this section is to go intentionally, express yourself, your creativity, ideas, however wacky, in a new way. Go do that. Now, what I'd really like is I'd like for these three assignments for you to come back and report. Like wherever you've watched this, if you've seen it on my Facebook page, report there. If you've seen it on my YouTube channel, report there. If you see it on LA Talk Radio, connect with me on one of the socials. Tell me what your experiment was. Okay. So the first one was to think about some experience in a new way and see what else you can discover. The second one is to get busy with these artificial intelligence tools and see what you can create. And the third one is to go try expressing yourself in a new way. All right. So those three assignments are there. Now we're going to talk about another piece, which is what is it that blocks our creativity? What is it that creates the stories in us that we can't, we're not? You know, I can't do that. I'm no good at whatever. Fill in the blank, right? 
So I have written down some of the things that I know for me has been a block for creativity and for some of the clients that I've had. Number one, self-doubt. That very story, I can't do that. How do you know? And even if you've tried it before and failed, how do you know you can't learn? How do you know you can't be amazing? How do you know that? It's a story, and that's all it is. So I want you to keep in mind, I don't use the word story pejoratively, but it, it, is, it is just a belief that you have, a story that you have that says you can't. And we all know the story of the elephant, the circus elephant, and the chain. When a circus elephant's young, they're chained to a stake, and no matter how hard they pull, it can't come out, and so they can't go beyond that. Okay, and then when they're full grown, the chain is there, but it's symbolic because something as big as a full grown elephant could rip it out. But because they're trained, that's as far as they can go. They don't try. They did that with a dog, too. The, there was a, the dog was in a maze and there was a plexiglass barrier and there was food behind it. And the dog could smell it and see it and kept trying to get it and bash it into the barrier over and over and over and over and over again. Pretty soon realized it couldn't have the food. They removed the barrier and the dog wouldn't eat the food because it believed that it couldn't have the food. So how many of those stories are going on in your heart? Where is self-doubt getting in your way? There's another piece that blocks failure, and that's fear in one of many forms. One is fear of failure. I'm going to stand up to give this talk and look like an idiot. I'm going to try out for that part. And I'm going to look wooden and stupid, and everybody's going to throw things at me. I'm going to embarrass myself in front of the world. I'm going to go give that talk and forget my lines or forget what I want to say and look like a complete idiot. And so that fear keeps us from trying. You know what else it keeps us from? It keeps us from being all that we can. It keeps us from making the contribution in the world we could. It keeps you from making as much money as you could. More money is on the other side of risk. I'm not saying go gamble or invest it all in Bitcoin, but I am saying to some degree and sometimes to a high degree, risk tolerance is necessary for your full development. What I know is that often I have to go right to the edge of the light, to the edge of what I know, and then take a few steps in the dark before ideas come, before a path of way forward is illuminated. Oh, wow, I could do that. That happens all the time. But when you're afraid, oh, the minute I go in there, I'm going to stub my toe, I'm going to fall on my face, then guess what? We hold back. Now, I have a funny thing, uh, an acronym that I use called WITOT, W-I-T-O-T. And it's another reason we're scared. It's another thing that holds us back from being our true selves, from expressing ourselves fully, from exercising our creativity, from creating. And W-I-T-O-T stands for what I think others think. In other words, the terror of what we believe somebody's thinking. Now, that's funny in about three different ways. The first way is you actually have no idea what anyone's thinking. And so what I think others think is all made up anyway. We tend to assume the worst. We tend to figure, well, they're going to think I suck or I'm stupid or I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sure they're thinking that. Well, you don't actually know what anyone's thinking. So that's the first way that's silly. The second one is What others are thinking is actually none of your business. And that might sound harsh, and people might express their feelings. Boo, hiss, throw tomatoes, or some softer expression of, you know, ridicule or disapproval. But it doesn't matter. Because someone not liking what I do or what you do, they're free to do that. I promise you, if you write a book, there's going to be people that don't like it. If you put a video up on Facebook, people are not going to like it. There's going to be some. But there's going to be some that resonate with it, that feel like it's good, that it touches them, that expresses something that they're familiar with. But they'll never have that opportunity if you live in Wittot, what I think others think, and you assume it's going to be bad, so you don't try. Creativity 
is destroyed when you live in fear. Here's what else I know. I, Kellen, I want to see your creation. I want to see your ideas. I want to see your writing. I want to see your videos. I want to see anything you do because I love people. I love your creation. I had a chance to meet a lady this afternoon. I'd never met her before. And we connected through a, a group that we belong to. And, you know, she was given to me as a, as a contact. So she reached out and said, hey, you know, let's, let's talk. And so I gave her a, a schedule link. I have a scheduling program because I'm a coach and people need to make appointments. And she used it and she, we booked a half hour this afternoon, two, three hours ago. And I could have approached that with trepidation. I could have been worried. What will she think? Will I be good enough? Will I make mistakes? Will I sound stupid or whatever? That kind of thinking holds back our connection. It keeps our relationship shallow. It blocks our creativity because one of the purposes of the meeting was to see how we could help each other. Like the purpose of this group is to facilitate each of us in the group to facilitate the growth and success of other members of the group. It's not for me to sell. It's for me to see how I can help others. And when everybody does that, everybody gets good stuff. So my feeling like, what if I look stupid? What if I don't sound good? What if this, what if that would have gotten in the way of all that? So I completely threw caution to the wind. I asked a whole bunch of questions about her and her work and her business. She asked a whole bunch of questions about me and what I need and, you know, everything else. And she's been in this group a couple of years longer than me. So she came at it with, gee, I've been here longer. I know more people. I know my way around a bit. How can I help you? So I told her unabashedly, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want. Now, if I'd been worried, it wouldn't have connected well. And you know what happened? She said, oh, well, you need this, this. Okay, good. And so right after the call, I sent her an email and she's already answered it. And so in the space of a couple of hours, I have three new introductions to people. She's already committed to help more, and I just can't wait to connect with these new people. In fact, I saw my email just before this. One of those had already answered and said, you know, whatever, I haven't read it all. So think about that. What I think others think, the fear of failure, the fear of not being good enough, the fear of looking silly, the fear of being, you know, I'm going to embarrass myself or I'll ask dumb questions or any other any other way to express that fear, it's not real. The fear is real and the effects are terrible. But the truth is it's only in your head. Like fear, you can't give me a plate of fear, a cup of fear. It's, it's all up here. It's a story. It is in your imagination. It gets in the way of your creativity. It certainly would have gotten in the way of what we can create if I, if I had you know, given in to any of those thoughts and feelings before we had our conversation. And gratefully, I didn't. And I've learned now over the years, that's why I'm sharing it with you, to just go all in. And you know what? When you fall on your face, and you will, when it doesn't work out like you want, and that will happen, it's okay. Forgive yourself, forgive them. No drama, no harm, no foul. And here's the real key to that. When things don't go your way or me my way, I used to do this so much. I was hesitant. I'm not going to try again. Ooh, I no, no, no. That was a disaster. I'm never going to do that again. I are you kidding? I'm going to stay as far away from that as I can. I don't even believe that doesn't even enter my mind anymore. If I do, I mean, if something blows up and goes completely south, I ask completely different questions. I say, hmm, what can I learn here? When can I try again? And what else is possible? What can I learn here? When can I try again? Because that would suck. Let's try again. What else is possible? So there's your next assignment. And that is the next time you feel like something is a failure, meaning it didn't work like you wanted it to. You got an outcome, a negative outcome, completely you know, away from where you, where you meant to go, then ask yourself those three questions. What can I learn? 
when can I try again? And what else is possible? I challenge you to do that. I dare you. And I dare you to give me an answer. Connect with me somewhere. And, and you know, my name, Kellen Flukiger, it's not hard to find. Connect with me somewhere and share with me what happens. I really would love to know. Because you know what happens most of the time? We get unexpected results. It's not as hard as you thought. It's not as bad as you thought. People are not trying to avoid talking to you. People do want to meet you. People want to be helpful. So there's another piece. And the very last um, piece I want to talk about is how do you fix this? How do you fix this reticence we have about creativity? How do you fix the idea that you don't have any talents, that you're not good enough, that you're not noteworthy? Well, there's lots of ways to go about that, and that might take a whole episode by itself, but I'm going to give you some suggestions. Number one, stop holding back. Go after it. Give it a shot. Try. Explore. Expand. Step one foot past the light. Go slightly into your discomfort zone. Try a new thing. See what happens. So that's the first thing. Just get over yourself and set the fear aside because you're not going to die. Nobody ever died of embarrassment. There's no medical evidence ever that anyone died of embarrassment. It's not going to happen. So number one, try something new. So that's your assignment here. In the next day, the next 24 hours, try something new and see what happens. If you're really brave, try something that you know you're a little afraid of. Say yes to that opportunity to give a presentation. Say yes to the next Toastmasters talk. Meet one more person or two more at the networking event. Go out of your way to meet a neighbor. Make a new contact or arrangement. Do something scary to build your business. Get a new prospect. Go do that because I promise you something. If you make that effort, you'll be rewarded. Not every time and things won't always go like you want, but you'll realize you're not going to die and it's not that bad. I promise you that. So uh, to summarize, here's what I want you to think. Take away from this episode on creativity. You are creative. You're wildly creative. You're amazingly creative. And you have gifts and talents. And if you don't think so, I, I invite you to take this challenge. Sit down and just make a list of things that you know you can do. Things that you do differently than others. Maybe you cook a certain dish different. Maybe you decorate your house a different way. Maybe you love reading certain kinds of books, and then you have conversations that other people can't have because you're so up to speed. Maybe you follow a particular branch of news. Then talk about it. Have the courage. Create the courage, even in a small way, to start to develop your creativity. So number one, have the courage to go try something new. Number two, set aside a small piece of time to just think about creative and weird things that you could do. I read a book once called The Accidental Creative, and that was written by a guy, and it was written for by a guy who was a creative, and it was written for, by, for people whose job it was to be creative on demand, illustrators and people that work for companies designing packaging and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And they're supposed to be creative on demand, to write something creative, to draw something creative. And that's their job full time. And no matter how good the last one was, the next one's got to be good, too, or better. And so that's a lot of pressure. Could be a lot of pressure. And here he, he gave a bunch of suggestions. And one of them was this. Take time to just explore creativity. It's easier than it's ever been with the Internet. So set aside a half an hour and explore creative stuff. Listen to some music. Look at some art. Look at some posts or stories where people, uh, where people are doing stuff you couldn't even imagine. I've been, for some reason, my feed, my, my Facebook um, stories, those stories that come, have been full in the last month or two or three with daredevil videos. And I don't remember selecting that, but people, I saw one today and I spend 10 or 15 minutes watching them. I, I see some, I, I did martial arts for a long time. And so maybe that's why a lot of them are martial arts, but people doing these incredible jumps 
and spinning around 58 times and kicking things that are way over their head and breaking boards and doing all that stuff. Well, I'm an accomplished martial artist at the level of second degree black belt, but I certainly never had begun to have the acrobatics that I've seen in there, the creativity to think of that and the creativity to set it up how to do it. Another thing that's been, uh, I've seen a lot of is people jumping off of incredibly high cliffs and things to get into the water. I saw one today where a guy did an amazing backflip and landed in the water that was way down there. My point isn't daredevil feats, although I seem to have seen a lot of those. It is the creativity of those who are willing to conceive it, to plan it, to organize it, to try it, and to then make it real. There it is on the video. So I challenge you to try some new stuff. Get over the story that you're not creative. Surprise yourself. And here's the reason. The fundamental reason behind all this is your ultimate life, a life of purpose, prosperity, and joy. You were given the gifts that you have for a reason, the, the natural gifts that you have, things you do good naturally. Those are part, an integral part of your biggest impact and purpose. What I've discovered is I call it the triple helix. And if you're watching the video, you can see I've got my fingers twisted in this thing. Think of a big rope, like a tie that ties boats up, like the big ones, right? A blue and yellow and white strand, and maybe it's two, two or three inches around. Each one of those three strands is a gift that you have. You have a set of existing skills, things that maybe you went to school to learn or trade school or something, something that maybe you've sold in the marketplace to get paid. Maybe you have a job doing this, that, and the other. That's one set of things, skills. A second one is gifts, things that you do naturally well. Maybe you're naturally kind. Maybe you listen really well. Maybe you're sensitive to energy. Maybe you've had a tough experience. You had a bad divorce, and so you've had an experience at resilience. You've, you have natural gifts. And the third strand is your life experience. The life experience that you have had has shaped you. Our life experience shapes all of us. Usually it's the tough stuff that shapes us the most, but it can be pleasant and wonderful things also. Now, here's what I can promise you. If you take a list, list the skills you have, maybe 10 of them, the gifts you have, maybe 10, and 10 things you've learned from your life experience, I promise you, I can make you a real absolute promise. And I want you to hold me to this. If you make a list of those things, 10 of them or so in each column, you will be able to weave together a skill, a book, a course, an offering. I call it MEO, your most effective offering. You will be able to find the thing, your own creativity, that is completely different than everyone else's who breathes air. And it will be your best offering to the world where you, with your creativity, your skills, gifts, and life experience, you'll be able to make the most impact, do the most good. You'll be able to make the most money, and you'll have the most fun. And it's not hard to understand why. Because when you combine all those elements of your life, that is the most of you or the most of me that we can offer. So, of course, it's the most valuable. Of course, it's the most fun. It uses the most of your life, the most of your heart, the most of your ability. So, of course, it's good. It's fun. It's easy to stay motivated. It's easy to stay connected to your creativity, your offering, the good you can add to the world. And I know from my own experience and from the experience of a ton of clients that if you'll go through that exercise, and maybe you'll have to do it two or three or four times. If you want my help, that's one of the things that I do is help people go, go through that and pinpoint their passion, that thing that you feel called to do, that thing that lights you up where you can make the most impact, the most difference in the world. You can make the most money and you can have the most fun. Now, isn't that worth the search? I mean, you're free to stay living, you know, stuck where you're at, 
Or maybe you're one of those people that's living your ultimate life right now. If you're that, I want to talk to you. I love having you on show on this one or the podcast. But 99% of people that I talk to don't say that. Are you living your ultimate life? Do you love your life every day? Oh, uh, yeah, not so much. So if you want a life that's full of joy, purpose, prosperity, explore your creativity, weave that gift, be your authentic self, quit hiding. Don't be infected with wittot, what I think others think. Express yourself freely, fully. I can't wait to see who you are as you create your ultimate life. You're listening to Your Ultimate Life with Kellen Flukiger, only on LA Talk Radio.